How are you? Good, we're still waking up, that's okay. I'm Vanessa Thomas, I'm the manager of Explore the Arts, which is the adult education arm of the Kennedy Center's education department. We present lectures, master classes, discussions, all sorts of things to bring people closer to the arts. And so this morning we have the pleasure of presenting a master class with Cyrus Chestnut. He played in the jazz club last night. How many people were here for that? Excellent. Excellent, and we are thrilled. It's rare that we have an opportunity to have a master musician interact with students and also give people insight into the educational process for the arts. So please join me in welcoming our teacher today, Cyrus Chestnut. He started his musical career at the age of three. By six, he was playing piano at the church in his hometown of Baltimore. And by nine, he was studying classical music at the Peabody Preparatory Institute. And through a series of events that followed that, he's now on the Kennedy Center stage. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Cyrus Chestnut. And please turn off any cell phones, pagers, or other things that would detract from this morning's master class. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I can actually see this morning. Oh, wow. Uh, welcome. Welcome to you all. Um, morning of piano. Morning of piano. You know, the very unique thing about this instrument, this, this invention, uh, 300 years old, uh, is its uniqueness in that it can be rhythmic, it can be melodic, and it can be harmonic. So I like to think of it as it's a foundational instrument. But however, one of the, I think of the challenges of the piano being that it, it is in a way, in a sense, away from you, of which you can actually play it without it taking a breath. The challenges is that if one develops a lot of strength, that you can sit for minutes, hours. And so on and so on and so on. Um, music is not necessarily done like that. I think the challenge for the pianist is that he or she has to learn how to breathe. Has to learn, because, you know, you can sit and you can play a variety of notes, and, you know, as long as you have the strength, boom, just go forever and ever. I mean, of course, the human body has to breathe, but if a, a saxophonist, uh, a trumpeter, a trombonist, well, in these days, they have learned how to circular breathe, but, you know, you remember studying in school about run-on sentences? And if you start an idea and you just ramble, 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 and you never really come to, a, if your idea never really has any shape or it just, just goes on and on and on and it never really stops and gives a person a chance to think about what you've said, you're just going on and 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 so forth. It actually, actually, I think after a while, the person in the first few minutes who was excited by seeing all the dexterity, wow, after a while, they sit back. And after a while, I believe the ear gets tired. And it's like, or in these days, they pick up the phone and put it in silent mode and start texting, hey, you know, this concert is boring, you know. So I think the challenge is that the pianist has all the pianist has to always remember to breathe, present, organize ideas. In the words of the great uh, Bobby Hutcherson, says sometimes you have to listen to the note that you play. You have to listen to the chord that you play to figure out what is what what next to do. If you're so busy going, feet and, ah, 
too, you know. When you have time, I mean, you know, sometimes, of course, you want to have density, but sometimes you got to play a note. Just, just like this here. There's an attack, there's a decay, there's a sustain and release. There's a lot into that. But if you spend the time of and you keep going for two hours like that, <laughs> you put it together yourself, you know? So, that being said, the people who are to come up here this day, I want you to present who it is, who is it you are, okay? Um, I'll give my thoughts and opinions, but there are my thoughts and opinions. In, in this land of living, which is called America, usually you have the freedom to be who you are. So you may like what I say, and you may not. But that's your choice, okay? So, who's first? Come on up. Come on up. State your name, sir. Um, I'm Matt Wiggler. Take the microphone, all right, all right. <laughs> I'm Matt Wiggler. Um, I'm still a high school student, but I've been uh, playing around the area and uh, you know, w working a lot doing jazz and blues gigs, and uh, really excited to be here. All right. Oh, wait, you got a hand up. You yes. Got a hand. Yes, yes, yes. Dwayne. Oh, <laughs> okay, this. Well, um, all right, you go ahead. Go ahead and go ahead and make it do.
Okay. I want you to play that. I want you, well, no, okay. I want you to start, and I want you to play that melody. I don't want no improvisation. Just play the melody for me. The way how you, the way how you. No, no, no. You didn't do that before. How did you do it? How did you start off doing it when you sat down first? As I was saying earlier, um, one thing about it, the, the piano is very, it's very easy. It's just sometimes we study and we're taught that we play everything is to be executed evenly. Okay. Now, sometimes in this idiom, if you listen to the music, some, sometimes that ideology in many ways has to be thrown out. There's a certain dance factor. There's a certain dance factor in this music, of which, if it's just going boom, 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 one and two and three and four and one and a two and a three and a four and one and a two and a three and a four and okay, if you, if, and studying classically, you're taught that um, as you practice, these here must be even. Yes, yes, yes. But if you ever you ever think about a dancer dancer, like if, what if there was a couple, if there was a, if it was a couple here or a single person here dancing, okay, and as you start playing, they start going through the moves. Do you think, do you think they would just go? No. Mm, <laughs> nah, nah. Now, there will be swings and pull, ah, and you know. All of this here. And so when you sit down to play, that's all a part of what you do. Okay? Because sitting down playing solo, you become the whole section. You become the drums. You become the bass. You become the horn section. All of that. And and, and if you're thinking about it, boop the it oh you know if you hear like you know, how do you get that? You know, it's, you have there's things that you have to you have to think about. If you always remember, you know, you always remember is that you got you have to you have to always keep those elements together. Now that's why I asked you just to play that. But let's play, play the, play, play your line. Just play the bass line. Just play the bass line. You play the different. You play the different. You're thinking about it now. Yeah, yeah. See, and, and, and it's easy when you take your when you put your focus on just simply the line. You know, beep, bang, bang. You know. In your research, in your research, in your research, now, you want to place your focus on the piano, but then you want to also do research on drummers, on basses, study the lines. You know, here, you know, be, be, boom, be, do, be, 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 do, be, be, boom, ba, boom, boom, do, 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 be, be, do, bang, get on, you know. And so, as, and so and I'm not asking you to, to be, to be in basses. But with that mindset, and as you think, and as you, as you as, uh, connect to that, you will play differently. You will play differently. Um, also, to uh, uh, I say, there's the dance, and there's okay, there was articulation. Okay, it, there's something else that I've been thinking about just lately, and it's just how people th conceive time. Now, if you think about what I was saying earlier about the one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a, 
we're taught studying classically that that there is very even. Okay, um, if you can hear hear accents on there's logical and then also maybe the illogical. Time still is moving, but just how you, you know, think again of the dancer. Think again of the dancer, you know. You know, all of that. If you can put that, if you can you start to think about that and apply it to here, it will revolutionize what you do. You know, because ultimately you want you want you want you want a place so that the most conservative of the conservative is sitting there standing, <laughs> and although they not they may, you mean they not be swaying, but if their baby toe is moving, you got them. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, okay. Um, and again, as I said about the about the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the ensemble. I know this is maybe may a lot of us are just writing, writing things. I want you to stop. In your process of playing, in your process of playing, Tom McIntosh, a great trombonist and arranger, told me this. If you can tell a good story, you will never have to worry about your career. Why? Everybody likes a good story. And so, if you're going to tell a story, you have your opening. The, I, I think the idea is you start here at point A, and whatever the rolling form that you have, and you want to end here. So you have that space be, that goes from here. Now, if I don't get to the exact, please forgive me, from here. So you have that to do, OK? Even right now, as you sit and play, you have your opening theme. You want to get to a, you want to get to your high point, and then once you get to your high point, you wrap it up. Okay. If you just take just the basic form and just go dip it, dip it, dip it, dip it, and it just it sounds as if you're just playing over the form. See, inside you, inside you, I'm quite sure something's telling you, you did that, oh, you did that, you did that, you already did that, you gotta come on, do something different. It, it happens to me all the time. Last night, it was like, oh man, why are you playing that? Come on, get out of there. Yeah, you know, you have to keep pushing it up. When it gets to the high point and you know it, then it's time to leave. <laughs> Don't need the rambling rose. Time, all right, and so I'm saying all this here to say is I want you to play this again, but I want you to tell a story. Tell, 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 tell a story. Think of the dancer. If you're going to play big passages, play the passages, because that's the big band. You know, you got to figure out a way how to do that. You know. In the course of in the course in, in the course of two hands, mm -hmm. and how you figure it out is how you figure it out. I could tell you my point of view on it, but that's not your point of view. You got to find your point of view and do that. Okay, so I want you to try this again. I want you to try this again. So, also, in the case, in, you know. In the case of strength training and doing scales and arpeggios, it's one, th one thing. And of course, there's a certain discipline you must adopt there. But also, I would encourage you to maybe do some of the scales with different accents, rather than boo da do da do da or boo boo or, you know, boo boo do da do boo do da do boo do da or do a do a do a do a do a, you know. You know, figure figure out different ways of how to articulate. Because once it becomes a part of you, then, you know, it's... 
da 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 See? That's what I've gotten just from listening to big bands and just listening to researching music. Even even listening even even listening to the orchestra. You know? You know, all of that. You gotta hear the whole thing. You gotta open your head to hear the whole thing. And then when you sit down to play, don't limit yourself. Alright? Alright? So try it again. I want you to try this again. I know it's a lot said. A lot said, but um take a second. Just think about think think about it. Just think, just think, take a second, think about it. Show me the dancer. Show me the dancer. That's all I want you to do. Show me the dancer. Hold it this time. Okay. <laughs> they want me to use the microphone. All right. I'm sorry. Do it once again. Do it again. Do it again. Now, using the chordal structure that you did before, I want you to utilize that same principle. Now start again, and this time keep going on, going, going on. Now, you know one other thing you can do? You play the beep ba da de ba do da 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 Okay? Now you got your bass line, but, you know. You got your hands there. Because, see, you, you use, use, use the piano, man. Use the piano. Am I okay? Am I, am I, is my time okay? Yes. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. Well, see, you can actually play a just a little thing like that. Just try it again. Well, see, you know, so like, like, 
along with the bass line. Okay? Try it again. Try it again. The same thing here. Yeah. See something like, something like that. Something yep. like that. Because, you know, sometimes you want the space, but then you, but oh, man. I got to get used to this. You know, and then go on you dig up, dig into it, dig into it. It's just like I'm trying to get you this to get get out of this. You can it's easy just to play the notes, dig and play an accent here, ah ah. But you know, if you if if it imagine that these folks here, you were playing for a dance, you playing for a dance. Everybody out here, and is your your responsibility to play music to make them, ah. <clears throat> and if you don't do it, you don't get paid. <laughs> In fact, you may it may it, you may have trouble keeping your life. <laughs> you know. So with that in mind, I want to go into just certain things. I want you to just start to think about. It's the process. It's very easy just to go ahead and play the notes, but. You got to give life to the notes. You got to give life to the notes. You got to make you got to make that G chord, and you got you got to you got to make those those triads. They have to have life. A C is always a C, but a C becomes your C when you put you to it. So put you to this. Try it again. Try it again. Very nice, very nice. There were moments where you decide just to take the break, to, you know, just to kind of just let it hang. But see, you want to get to the point where you let it hang always. Mm -hmm. Just go ahead and go for it. You know, great Betty Carter told me, take a chance, baby doll. <laughs> take a chance. You never know until you take a chance. Okay? And so, also, too, the more that you get an understanding of metric, of how quarter notes, eighth notes, triplets, sixteenths, thirty seconds, sixty fourths, one twenty eighths, two fifty six, up to ten twenty fourth notes and so forth. There's a lot of space there. Mm -hmm. And see what and over time what you want to get to the point of where even if you play ahead, you have the ability to play right on mark. The push may be a little bit here, but then the lay back too, but you still, it's still there, okay? Because all of that makes, it makes a difference because we human beings, although it's probably a lot, you know, we're thought of supposed to be, we're not perfect beings, okay? Sometimes we hear things one a little bit back, wherever, you know? So you have to be able to create that to create that and do your research do your research 
when you do your research, <coughs> connect to what you research. Because when you connect to it, it becomes a part of you. People are more interested in hearing you. They can go to a record. They can go to YouTube. They can hear all of the classics. If a person's coming to see you play, they're not coming to hear Bud Powell, Charles Brown, Wynton Kelly, Bill Evans, Chick Corea. You know, they're not, they're, here. they're coming to see you and present them you. So your research, your practice, all of your development is going, hopefully, to develop you. Because ultimately, you've got to find your song and work on your song, because ain't nobody going to be able to play it. Ain't nobody going to be able to, they may try to play it, but ain't nobody going to play your song better than you, your composition. All right? You have something else you want to play? Oh, he's going to play a ballad. All right. <laughs> Paint the picture, sir. Okay, I gotta stop you, I gotta stop you, I gotta stop you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry here. You know, I had a conversation, had a conversation with someone uh, a couple days ago. And, uh, the older gentleman says, you know what the problem is with jazz these days? And I said, what? He says, it's not sexy. So some people say, oh! But I start to think about it. I had to take the eroticism out and think about what he was saying. The sensitivity, being sensual. If we're so uh, committed to playing all of this space age harmony, which, you know, hey, that's, if that's what one hears, okay, but if it doesn't communicate with the folks, hey, if you don't make the notes sing, the notes don't sing, if you can't pull a person out of their immediate surroundings, can you do to transport them to that meadow for a few minutes or that seaside, that beautiful place that one will go for solace? What can you do? Are you just going to do that by going bang, 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 bang? Lord, that's in Betty. I just said, ooh, I just had a Betty Carter flashback. What's that? That bang, 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 bang. How did it bang? I'm sorry. <laughs> but no, you know. Um, if you're going to sit down, if you're going if, if to sit and
if you're going to sit and play a ballad, the first thing what you want to do is as you learn the melody, you need to connect to it. Okay? <laughs> and you have to, even where you are now, you have a lot more life to live. And, you know, um, you'll get your blues training. <laughs> you will get your blues training. And those and you will rule and as you as you grow up you will start to learn more and more the meaning of the flat at third and the flat at seventh. That is some that is something that you can't learn out of a textbook. Something that as you go along each day, you know, point as you live life, you know. But right now, but even right now, you've had some blues training. You've had some. And the song that you're playing is called what? The Nearness of You. So, uh, I got it. This is going over the net, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. I'm be okay. Mm -hmm. Zap, close that door. Okay. <laughs> um, let me think. Do you own a pet? Yes. What kind of pet do you own? Dog. What type of dog? Cocker Spaniel. Cocker Spaniel. Okay. You feed the dog. Mm -hmm. Okay. You give him water, you walk him, exercise, right? Now, have you ever had a time where you sat down and that dog came right next to you, sat right next to you, and lay, is it uh, he or she? she? Well, you ever had a time when she came next to you, sat down, and laid her head, either if you were sitting on the floor, laid her head on your knee, or if you were sitting down, came right up and laid at your feet? How did that make you feel? Uh, warm. Okay. Uh, there's no, 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 look, look, I'm not, this is no trick question. No quick, I'm, I'm, yeah, how did it make you feel? I'm, I'm not, just, but it was a certain emotion. It's a certain emotion. She was near to you. And at that point, you were near to her. Could I say that? And so, with that in mind, with that in mind, with that in mind, also, one thing that I have to challenge myself is learning, learning the lyric, especially of a song. Because if you learn the lyric that the, po that the composer uh, wrote, that will also give you some insight into the basic concept of what was going on. Learn everything that you can about it. But for right now, I want you to think of that dog. I want you to think of that dog. I want you to think of that dog. I want you to turn around and with, the, and with that image, whatever image, I want you to construct something. Not where you're just playing chords and notes. Again, you'll hear me a lot saying about you have to make notes live. You have to figure out how to take that emotion of what you felt between. What's, what's the dog's name? Lily. Le oh, <laughs> Lily. Yeah. Lily comes over there, tick, 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 you know, sits down. And you look, and you look down, or say, "Let's." No, you're not sitting in the chair. You're down. You're down. You're down on. You're down. You're down on. You're down on the. You're down on the floor. Say, for instance, let's let's paint. Let's set this up good. There is a couch here, all right. And stereo's playing, and instead of you sitting in, oh no, that's not. Uh, over. For right now, whether she's allowed to get on the couch or not, we're going to allow her on the couch for this moment. You're sitting on the couch listening to some music, maybe reading a book or something. Lily jumps up 
on the couch. Not on the other side of the couch, right next to you, where you feel her warmth, you feel her essence right there on you. And she lays there. And like, what's up? I'm sure glad to be around you. And you look and you see her and, and she brings a second smile to your face. Maybe perhaps you take your hand and you pet it. And then there's a certain feeling there. See, music is always about feeling. You can't take the feeling out of music. You can't. Notes, chords, rhythms have to live. You can't. Once you take the feeling out of music, then it just becomes a boring etude. You gotta have a have a have a good balance, and you know. And as you learn theory, you have to also develop philosophy. You gotta have a reason why you play these things. So, with that in mind, with that in mind, with that in mind, Lily, play this song for Lily, Lily or Lily, however you wish. All right. Think of that scenario, or if you want to paint another scenario, do that. Constructed. One thing I require of you is that you play the melody as accurately as accurately as you can the first time. Don't disrespect the composer. Play the melody that he or she intended, at least the first time. Then after that, it's all fair game. Okay? You got it.
Who's next? Sam Prather, I'm a grad student at Howard, graduate of UMBC and UDC, um, and studied under uh, Alan Johnson, and currently studying under, um, ah. ooh. ooh, get myself in trouble. Ooh, Jay, you should be here. Uh, <laughs> don't know you, don't you study under <laughs> Oh, ooh, man. And it's, and, and it's, it's, it's the lights, I know, it's on the I web, know. it's gonna give it. Well, the the every, everybody knows the everybody knows the magician up in the tower at Howard. I can't right now his name is escaping me. Um, <laughs> That's all right. Don't say no more. Don't say no more. You're digging yourself down. <laughs> oh, it'll come to me well in tune. What you gonna play, man? Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna play. Uh, I guess Caravan first. All right, Caravan. All right, all right, all right, all right. Do me a favor. With your left foot, with your left foot, I want you. So just do that. Music has a pulse. Don't stop the foot.
Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. First thing, you know, like I say, motion. Motion. Okay. Again. 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 Um, saying again, you cannot forget the dancer. Okay. You cannot forget the dancer. Also, too, um, I hear where you're going as far as with the, with the, with the, with the melody and the articulation of the melody. But I just want to encourage you to make sure that you get that melody fully under your hands. Get it fully under your hands, okay? One rule of stem, I like to, I don't ever, if I'm going out to play something, somebody says, do you know this? If I don't really know it that well, and if I don't think that I, my ears is going to pick it up, pick it, pick it up and get through it, then I'm not going to do it. If, if I'm going to play something and, and I'm not sure of the melody, I'm not going to play it because I'm not going to disrespect the composer's melody. As I've been in the situation with a gentleman in a club called Bradley's in New York uh, just a couple days ago. <laughs> oh, uh, a, a few years ago. Whatever. The song was Yardbird Sweet. And I didn't know the melody. And afterward, uh, I'm going to have to give you a stripped down version of what he says here you have to use your imagination as in what was really said. Young man, you don't know the melody of that song. Why are you playing a song and you don't know the melody? That's the problem with y'all young whippersnappers. You don't know the melody. You don't know the music. You don't study. What's wrong with you? Why are you going to do some thing as dastardly as that. And it always left something in my head. Okay? Is that if I'm going to play a piece, if I'm going to play a piece now, there's a certain realm of interpretation. Okay? But in general theory, in general theory, you want to make sure that you have that, me that melody really good in your hands. Also, once again, I had you go through that because there's a certain, there's a certain feeling, you know, being, you know, like caravan. I had the opportunity to go to uh, Lebanon and um, was in Beirut. Yeah, I got a chance to hear the music. You know, it's like, wow. You know, if you want, it's carav caravan, okay? And so forth. Um, it's got to be. You have to develop a certain groove right off the get off the get go. Okay, and I prefer something to groove. And you want to make sure that that groove, that the dance factor never wavers. That, you know, people can still, you can still create motion. Okay? Um, two, this instrument, I want to tell you this, this instrument is only going to do what you tell it to do. So if you go just go, dip, 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 dip. And, you know, if you don't vary your dynamics, it's not going to say, oh, I need to play loud, so I'm going to do that. It's up to you to do that. And so um, you have to have these, you have to think of, you have to have these things in, in thought, in thought. Hold on.
microphone. I have the microphone. <laughs> you have to paint pictures. You have to paint pictures. You have to paint pictures. And so this instrument is, I like to think of it as the, the foundation, the beginning of music synthesis. Because in it is your string section. In it is your drums. In it is, as I said earlier, your horn section. All of it is there. It's up to you how you get it out. Okay? Don't be afraid of this baby. Don't let the piano master you. You master the piano. Okay? All right. Now I want you to go back here. Go back again. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to take you out of the idea that you, because you definitely have a specific idea that you want to present. But um, whatever you do, be sure about it. Be sure about it. Is that the better way to say it? Sure. Show is okay. Okay. All right. All right. You know. Be, you know. I mean, be definite. If but oh no, man. If, if you play timid, it's going to come out timid, okay? And it's better, and I was told, and I kind of agree in these days, it's better to play something loud and wrong, mean it. You can always correct us. Oh, my bad, I'm sorry, you know? But if you play it timidly, it speaks a lot of, a lot of, I think, uh, um, volumes, and you don't necessarily want that. Because if you're in a role playing in the band or something like that, and playing with someone, and you're playing Timmy, um, they wouldn't go too gentle on that. You could be the most talented person on this face of this earth, but if you play Timmy, no one will ever know it. So you want to go up there? I want you to dig into this baby. You know, I, she belongs to you. Yeah, you understand? You know huh? In the microphone, I guess. Charles Covington, don't choke me. <laughs> you shouldn't have said it. You forgot Char oh, Lord. Who's <laughs> I won't tell him either. I gotta tell you a story about Charlie, if you don't, if you don't mind. First time I saw Charlie Company was in Baltimore. I was walking in the harbor. And they had this young lady. She wasn't interested in me, but I was just, oh, anyway. I was walking, and I heard this music. Boom, do, do, you do, boom. I said, ooh, that's bad. It was like the Pied Piper. It was music. I had to. I was just walking. And I had to find. I had to find it. I was walk. I walked. I walked all around. And as I got closer, yeah, there it is. The Pied Piper was pulling me in, and there was Charlie playing a Fender Rhodes piano. Ooh. Mm. He used to play at Windows um, down in the harbor, and he used to always get there early just to hear him go through all of this. Just these magical. Like you, you say, magic. He would do his magic tricks too. He would go to the sportsman's lounge at the time, up there, in, up there in Baltimore, and clean the house. That was the only time I know when Mickey Fields would straighten up. Yeah, he was. He was sitting at the hammer, and Mickey, you know, he did that foo 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 playing. You know, this kind of catting for the ladies. You know, <laughs> Charlie come and walk up in there, and the cat, he straightened up. <clears throat> Got the cobwebs out, and boy, it was on. Don't forget, Charlie. Oh, like, you, I, oh my gosh. Hmm. Anyway, all that being said, I'm forgetting me. So I can't believe he forgot Charlie Covington. Oh, what hell, mercy. Hmm. I want you to play Caravan again. I want you to play Caravan again. But I want you to dig into the piano. I want you to paint a picture. Okay. Um, connect to what it is that you're doing. Connect to what it is that you're doing. And then share it. Share it. Let, have fun here first. Have fun here first. If you have fun here first, it's going to get out. But you have fun here first.
Very nice, very nice, very nice, very nice. I want to take a quick, quick segue here, and now I'll do it here with you, everybody too. Um, this is one thing I wanted to talk about. It's a certain uh, concept, not only in jazz improvisation, but it's a concept in just music improvisation. Uh, it was one time I had an opportunity to spend with Lionel Hampton uh, in Avery Fisher Hall, and uh, the song was How High the Moon. And, you know, Gates was a little bit um, up in age, and so, you know, he, you know, it took, a, it took a second. He had to, he, he went into a rehearsal room because the piece we were supposed to play was How High the Moon. He said, <laughs> hey, Gates, he called everybody Gates, you know. Hey, Gates, uh, I need you to go over that. I don't, I don't think I know that. And so then I, <sighs> so he said, just, just play the cards, just play the cards. So I played the chords. I played the, played the first chord. Boom. And he went boom, 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 bing, 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 boom. He outlined the chord. Through the whole, we did it twice. And then after he did that, he said, all right, here you go. Here you go, Gates. Ah, ah, ah. And he went on and played it like he never forgot it. So I'm like, oh, he messing with me. But it tied together something of which I studied in school, of which, in a sense, I struggled. And it's taken me a long time, and it's now I'm, cur I'm encouraging every musician to really uh, think about the chord tone approach. And the chord tone approach is basically, if you know the tones, if you know the tones on a chord, then there's... That's, 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 a good part of, that's a good part of the process already worked out. Studying chord tones helps you with harmony. Uh, certain things that are, certain songs that you don't like to play in certain keys, if you know your chord tones, it opens you up harmonically wide. Okay, so we're going to take a blues progression, all right? And it's a very simple exercise. Over 12 bar blues, you start off writing the, um, one, three, five, flat seven, the dominant seventh chord, all right? So um, do me a favor. Um, in your left hand, just play uh, the root and the flat seven, the F and the E flat, please. No, in just your left hand, I want you to play, yes, uh-huh, okay? Now, in your right hand, I want you to play F, boo, 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 wee, F, okay? No, no, I don't want you to da-da-da-da, I want you to play boom, 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 bee. Do it again. Every t now, once you do this, once you do this, as you do that, take a time, take the time to listen and connect to those tones. Okay? So then we go to the B flat seventh chord. Okay? Uh huh. Then we're going to come back again to that F seven chord. Okay. Now, depending on what changes you're going to use, the changes I use in school are here's the two five, the C minor seven. So you want to play C and B flat in your left hand. And then go play that F seven again for me, please. Okay. Now we want to go to B flat seven. Okay. And then you'll do that again. And then you're going back to F seven. Now here I'm going to take the uh, turn around to G minor, which will be a A here is A minor seven flat five. So I want you to play that, that play the A, mm -hmm. and the D seven, please. The G minor seven, please. Okay, the C seven. Now we're going to go one six two five F seven, D seven. Okay, now, okay, so once you, once you sit and work that out, then you take the metronome, okay? You can either decide that you want the, the metronome to go quarter notes, tick, 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 or you can have the metronome set so that it does two and four. Now, what you do is with that, do da hoo oh, ooh ba hoo da, oh ba hoo ba, let's pull it down a little bit, do da hoo da, right about here. 
Okay, even right here, as you hear the metronome, you got to make the metronome swing. Feel a dance on that. Oh, oh, ah. Ooh, do, do, da. Oh, do, do, ah. Ooh, do, do, de. Ooh, do, do, de. Ooh, do, do, eh. Okay, let's try right back here. Ah, a two. A one, a two, three, eh. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. See, bo, bo, do, do, de. Ah, yeah. Uh huh. All right. Okay. You, 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 won't, you won't get there. You're just moving ahead of the game a little bit. No, good, okay, but let's start here. Let's just do one, three, five, flat seven. Okay. Right here. Two. Oh, one, two, three, and B flat. F seven. Two, five. B flat. Execute it. Back to F7. Turn, turn around. Ah, C, 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 C. It's not as easy as you think it. Probably what happened, he was like, yeah, I got this. I got this. And then that turn around came and said, ah! Oh. <laughs> Let's try it again. Let's try it again. Let's try to just get through it. Let's get through it. How am I doing? Okay, all right, okay, all right, all right, all right. Let's try it again. Oh, one, a two, three, go. Uh, 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 uh. B flat again. F for seven. Just a turn around. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. F7, D7, F, F7, D7, do bum boo boo, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Okay. okay, so that's the basic gist of it. Now, I want you to do it backwards. Okay, I want you to do it backwards. Be ba doo da, be ba doo da. Okay, two, a one, two, three, go. Okay. Yeah, you know. You can try it again. Try it again. Let's slow it down. Let's try. Let's slow it down a little bit. Uh, but one, two, three, and uh, B flat. But uh, then, uh, uh huh. Very good. Uh, uh. You should turn around. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. All right, so you hear the idea of it. It, it, it. You think of it's like, oh, it's a simple thing, but that exercise in, in the keys that you don't like, whether it's the A's, the A, the A's, the E's, the D's, the F sharps, the B naturals, or whatever, you know, it becomes very pumped, very, it, op it's, it really starts to open you up, really seriously. Now, there's so many different variations of this. That's just one, three, five, seven. We can go to three, five, seven, nine. Okay, let's just try three five seven, three five flat seven nine, three five flat seven nine. Okay, so you still you still keeping uh, you still keeping the root and the flat sevens in your left hand. All right, try it. Mm hmm, mm hmm, yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Try, go ahead. Try. Just take take your time. Okay. There you go. Okay, so you got the gist of that, okay? So, and then you take that up and back. Now, then we go on to five. So now, now let's, let's stay in here, right? I said three, five, three, five, seven, nine. Now, you can also alter the nine. Make it three, five, flat, seven, flat, nine. Or you can call it three five flat seven sharp nine. Okay, so there's a there's a, possi a lot of different possibilities. Okay, um, then there's five seven nine eleven seven nine eleven thirteen, and you know as you as you experiment with that, it, it'll, it'll really it re it really starts to open you up harmonically.
so that when you see certain things, if you can discipline yourself to do one month in a key that you don't like, <laughs> yeah, really. one month in a key that you like, hopefully after about halfway through the month, it should become a little more easier to hear that key. You know, it's, it, 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 it really helps. It really helps. Now, to take it a step further, once you get that, then uh, I had to learn this thing called approach tones. Catch, you get a target. Half step above, half step below. So, B, B, ba, 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 B, F sharp, E natural, F, A, C, E flat. Okay? F sharp, half step above. Uh huh. Principles of bebop. If you figure it out, you know. Principles of bebop. You can go if 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 you're willing, if you're willing to discipline yourself, and go through it. And if you can discipline yourself and go through all 12 keys, oh, boy, you'll be, you'll be a smoker then. You will walk up on any vocalist gig with confidence. You don't have to be. And, it's, you know, some vocalists are like, uh, I need to do this song, and I, I need to do it in E. So, all right. Versus she go to a jam session. Uh, I don't want to play it in that key. You walk up and say, all right, move over. Let's go. You ready? And if any smart aleck comes up to you trying to bust your chops, say, I got something for you. I say, you want to go around the circle? Let's go around the circle. I don't care because I, I got it. It comes from the chord tones. And it's not only jazz improvisation. It's the fundamentals of music. It, once you open your head up, it opens your head up harmonically. So you hear anything from, you know, wherever. Becomes a little, it becomes a little easier. Listening to music becomes a lot easier because you've opened up your head harmonically. And that's very, that's, that's very important. What else you got to play? Oh, he going to play some polka dots and moonbeams. Oh, okay. You walking up my street here. All right. Now, remember... Anything I said to anyone, just remember, 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 just remember. I don't know how you're going to paint the picture, and that's, that's fine. I mean, how you want to do it is your, is, is your privilege and all, but, you know, paint me the picture.
everybody always uses the sharp four movement, the Sears Roebuck movement. <laughs> Dressed up and everything. Tell everybody. Hello, uh, I'm Amy Borman. And, uh, hey, hey guys. Hey. Oh, hey. Hi, Mike. Um, I just graduated from Howard University, grad school. And uh, before that, I was at University of Michigan. And before that, I was at Duke Ellington School of the Arts in the District of Columbia. And from here, and I'm still here. Uh, I'm going to play Stella by Starlight. Now, I know that there's a microphone out there, and I know um, if some of you may have questions at a certain time, uh, we will allot, you know, will allot time for various questions. So um, if you can hold them for a second, we'll get to them as expediently as we possibly can.
Duba daba 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 duba <laughs> Metrically, as I said earlier, I love what you did. Well, give me a Metrically, I think the one thing about playing the piano and how we are trained to play the piano, and as I said it earlier, we are taught that when we, we deal strictly with the metronome in that, that is correct. One and two and three and four, and one and two and three and four, and one and two and three and four, and or, or, you know, do ba 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 do different um, instrumentalists. You know, one thing I would encourage you to do sometimes, and you probably do it, but maybe take a second, a step away from pianists. Listen to horn players, saxophonists. Because what you're going to do is, and not taking away from do ba da ba do ba da ba do ba da ba You have to also some kind of figure out how how to broaden your metric sense. How to broaden your metric sense. It's to say, There's a lot of space that if you limit yourself, if you limit yourself and just deal with just a one, the two, and three, and four, you know, um, if that's your conception, then hey, you got it. But um, I just think if you listen to music and how sometimes the human, the human being isn't necessarily in perfect time. And sometimes the most, the greatest beauty in music happens, which a lot of people say, in between the cracks. You know, in that area where you're not sure whether it's a triplet or an ace note or whatever it is, it just feel good. You know, now, there's, um, of course, as we study, we want to put that into a theory. And if, if, you know, but there's a certain part of music that's magical, I believe. It's a certain spirit that it's very difficult to actually pick.
pinned down. You know? But if you leave yourself open to it, you know, just sometimes you be like, ah, 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 ah. See, it's not, you could write it out like that, but how do you get, ah, 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 ah. Or, or like in, as I was talking about earlier, do, 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 do. No. Um. You know, you have to, if, if you open yourself to different, different ways of how to deal metrically and how, then you've got a whole nother, a, ho a whole nother world. And it, be and it becomes even more funner. If that's not the right word to say, it be, it becomes it becomes very exciting. Okay, what I'm trying to do is just to get to just to open you open you up even more. What you're doing is great. Get me wrong, but it's just to open you up even more. Open you up. Um, and in your research, I mean, like someone like you can check out like a, Win a Winton Kelly, but then if you listen to Bill Evans. Oh my goodness, he was a ballerina. You 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 just oh you know? You heard that and you felt that. So the idea is can you connect to something like that? And how can you make your theme song? That's what you say, right? How can you make your theme song get even more starlight? You see the starlight, you see it, you look and you see the lights. The stars are not perfect. You look out in the sky, they're all different. And it's, you know, when you look out, when you look out, when you look, if you look in this and see the lights, see the stars, how does it affect you? How does it affect you? I don't want you to answer. It's not, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to just, just throw it out there. How does it affect you? And I don't need you to tell me how it affects you. This tells me. Okay? So, we started out very nice, very well put together. But, um, I would like to see you experiment more with just maybe fluctuations in time, which maybe in this, to certain, certain people and certain teachers, they may say, you can't do that. I may be telling you certain things that some, you know, teachers may say, oh, you can. But this is music. It's a perfect yet imperfect science, I believe. And so, um, if you're trying to tell stories, if you're trying to create life, if you're trying to paint color, and, I, and I'll, I'll say this and I want you, want you to try to do it again. That's a painter. Think about this. That's a painter. He or she dip is her brush in the paint. And when you take a stroke, is it when they go this way? Is it so perfect that everything's in in line? Now maybe some people have a pointy thing where boom. Uh or maybe somebody has a bigger brush and then it's that and let it fall where it falls. Let the colors and everything fall where it falls. And you look at that and you react a certain way. No. No. So you're saying, well, what do you, what do you, what do you mean here? What I'm saying to you is that, is that you're creating this picture. You need, I want you to go a little bit further than just playing everything metrically correct within the quote-unquote jazz vernacular. I want you to reach further down into yourself. That person that's in the practice room that every once in a while you get down in a certain zone and you yourself gets transported. Bring that person here and share it. Can you do that? It's not an easy thing to do because, it's a, because it, it you know, takes you in a certain realm of the unknown where if it's not so completely calculated, it's like, I don't know if I want to take a chance, but in the words of the great Betty Carter again, baby doll, you gotta take a chance. You don't know what's going to happen. But 
you know, create, create pictures, create pictures. Let me not only hear the notes, let us, let us not only hear the notes, but let us see the picture that you're painting. Okay. Theory you have. Theory you have. But I want you to further develop your philosophy of what it is that you try to say with the notes. Okay? You don't have to go into the old the, of, of the of the thing. Just just, you know, as you start just to play over play over the changes. Just play a couple courses over the changes. And, you know, just um, in fact, I tell you what I do. On, uh, uh, you don't want to concentrate on one hand so much. The piano, by history, is two-handed. Okay, There's an, I had another. I was lectured by another by by a gentleman, the great Curtis London. He said, "Yeah, bro, no, yeah, young bro, you all right? You just don't got no left hand. You don't have no left hand. You need a left hand. You know, pianos. And I was and being around pianists, the you know." It's two hand is a two handed instrument. Even if you're playing lines here, you still the left hand is still giving the anchor, giving support to what it is that you're doing. Okay. And sometimes you wanna you wanna go there, but don't let it don't 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 let it sit there and say, Okay, well you got it. Mm -mm. No, you gotta holler at the left hand, Come on, come on, baby, come on, get some. Come on, you know. So you gotta keep that in there too, all right? All right. Very beautiful. Very beautiful, very, very beautiful, very beautiful, very beautiful. Have something else. Ooh. You know, you stepping. Uh, I hear you. Go and get some now. All right. 
She said Chelsea Bridge. <laughs> <laughs>